Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 10. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to use tile sheets to add some graphics to our rooms, but first let's review what we did last time. Ok, let's switch to the code and let's run our game and see where we got to. So we can see that the screen now follows the player as they move around the room. And we can still move between rooms and we still have some entities which follow our player around. So let's take a quick look at our view class and just remind ourselves how that works. So in the update method for our view class which gets called uh, from our game state, so it's just one of the things that gets updated every time our game logic updates, we can see that we change the position of the view based on the player's position, which we get from the game state object, um, but also based on the, on the uh, room that we're inside of, uh, which we can get from the map inside of our game state object as well. And we introduced a clamp function which makes sure the x and y positions are always between the player's position and uh, what we're calling max x and max y, and these are just two values we work out based on the room we're inside of and a tiny offset. So if you don't quite remember how that works, you can go back and review the last episode. But really, we're just making sure that the player is either in the centre of the screen at all times, or if they're in the corner of our room, then we just stop the camera from moving. Um, we, the reason we did that was because we want to keep as much of a room on the screen as possible. It just looks nicer, feels a bit better. Okay, so this episode we are going to think about using tiles um, and tile sheets in order to start adding some graphics for our rooms. We'll probably do a couple of episodes on this because we need to write not, not exactly a lot of code, but there's a lot of logic that goes into it. But So first of all, let's do a quick overview of tiles and how they work. If we bring up a diagram. So if you look at the picture on the left, you can see that we have a room and it's made up of 10 by 8 tiles. Uh, so we have 80 tiles in total. But only seven of these tiles are unique, so we only need the seven tiles, and by reusing them, we can draw a whole scene. And this is a technique lots of uh, retro or early games used, Zelda, in fact games still do it now, um, but if you think about Zelda, Sonic, Golden Axe, many games, um, they use the tile approach. And the reason you do this is because when you send image data, or textures as they're normally called, when you send textures to the graphics card or when you manipulate textures for drawing, um, the limiting factor of how much work you need to do is how much information you have. So if you can chop your image up into smaller reusable pieces, you can draw a lot more, you can get a lot more done, and it takes less computing power. So we're going to use a similar approach for our game. So let's bring up the next diagram and just have a look at how our tile sheet is going to be laid out. Each of our tiles is going to be 8x8 eight eight pixels. Um, all of our tiles are going to be packed into one texture. So that means we're going to put all of the tiles we're going to use for a room into one image, and then we need to write some code that will let us draw a tile based on the row and column that that tile is in. So if you again look at the diagram here, you can see that uh, if we draw tile 3, 2, what we mean is we want to draw the tile in the third column and the second row. Um, so we just need some code that says, hey, use this tile sheet and draw tile 3, 2 at this position, and we want our game to go ahead and draw it. So let's just start uh, by loading in some tiles and drawing them, and then in future episodes we can look at how, how we make a tile map to represent how we want all of the tiles to be drawn, and also how we can make our tile drawing a bit more efficient. Okay, let's crack on with some code. So the first thing we need is a class. Like most things, we want a class because we have a piece of behavior and we want some code that can look after that behavior for us. So inside of our graphics folder, let's make a new file and let's call that file tilesheet.lua. And as is probably familiar by now, we're going to start off by making a local table inside of tilesheet.lua. It's called tilesheet and we'll return it at the end of the module. And this will just give us something to attach our methods to. And the first method is going to be a create method for creating instances of our tile sheet, just like we've done with all of our other classes. So we'll make an instance, and we'll make sure we return the instance. 
So what arguments do we need when we create a tile sheet? What information do we need? Well, it would be useful if we had an image path. So we need to know where the image uh, we want to load is located. And we also want the size of our tiles. And if we assume our tiles are square, we can just pass in one value here. If they were rectangles, we'd have to pass in the width and the height, but because it's square, we're just going to pass in uh, the, well, the width and the height, but they're going to be the same because it's a square. Okay, so let's load up our image and we just do this with love.graphics uh, new image, just like with our sprite. So image path. And also let's just set the tile size on the instance of our object. Very good. And let's wire this into our main.lua file just to start with. Eventually it's not going to live here, we're going to put it inside of our rooms, but just to get something we can run and check for bugs, we'll put it here. So local tile sheet equals require source.graphics.tilesheet. And then down here, let's just do local tiles equals tilesheet.create and this will need an image path and a tile size. So let's quickly look at the tiles we're going to use. Aha, we don't have them yet. Let's quickly copy the tiles um, into the correct folder because I forgot to do that before the start of the episode. So I've got some basic numbers tiles. Uh, the, we're not actually going to use these for our game, but this is useful to work out if we're loading the correct tile. And I'm just going to put those in the assets, sprites, tiles folder. Okay, let's just check the... Cool. So these will be available um, on GitHub with the rest of the code. So if at any time you want to look at the code we've written for an episode, you can just follow the link in the... Uh, in the whatever the piece of text underneath the video is called and go to GitHub and take a look. So here are our tiles. They are eight by eight pixels and we have four tiles by four tiles. I've only drawn the first eight here, but we could fit in more if we needed them. And the reason we've got different numbers and colors is just so we can check that we're loading in the correct tile and that our tile loading code works. And once we know that, we can swap these out for some actual uh, game graphics. Okay, so now we know our tile path, that's going to be, or our image path, that's going to be assets, sprites, tiles, numbers, dot png, and we know that our tile size is going to be 8. So let's just run our game, and nothing has changed, which is good, because it means nothing has broken. So now let's think about our tile sheets, or our tile sheet. So we know that our tile is made up, or, or our tiles, or our tile image is made up of lots of smaller tiles. So we need a way of chopping this image up into smaller pieces so we can only draw one at a time. And the way you do that in Love 2D is you only draw part of an image and you do that by using something called a quad. So a quad is just a, it's a portion of an image that you want to draw. And what we need to do is for every tile in our tile sheet, we need to create a new quad at that position and then we can attach it to our tile sheet class and use that for drawing the tiles. So it sounds like we need to loop through something, so let's use a for loop. So let's just say for tile x equals 1. Um, and we need to get the maximum number of tiles in a row, so tile x equals 1 all the way to inst dot image get width um, and we can divide this by the tile size so the width of our image divided by the tile size should give us the number of tiles and we'll just make sure we add a do and an end in there and then let's have another loop in here called tile y and again we'll just do the same as we did before but this time for the height by tile size to end. So this means for every uh, every row we should go through um, all of the columns and pull out our tiles. So now we need somewhere to store our quads so let's just 
attach a new table to the instance called quads. And for now, just to keep things simple or simpler, we're going to use a 2D table, which just means a table which has tables inside. So the first thing we want to do for every row is to add at the tile x um, index, add a new table. And that means when we actually access our quads inside of our second loop here, we can just use two lots of square brackets to access the, um, access the thing inside of our table. And that thing here is going to be the quad. So we can do tile x, tile y, oops, tile y. So we know that for our first tile, um, it will be at int.quads11, our second tile, int.quads12, etc, etc. So here we can just go ahead and do love.graphics.newquad. And so now what does a quad need? It needs an x position, oops, x position, a y position, a width, and a height. That's the x and y position on the image we want to draw part of. It also takes two arguments called source width and source height, which are the last two here. And they're actually the easiest to get because we can, or maybe the second easiest, but either way, we can just do inst.image and there's a method on image called getDimensions. And this will just give us the size of our image. So that's those two taken care of. And now the width and the height, that's just going to be the tile size. So we can go ahead and use tile size there. So let's think about X and Y. So the X position is going to be tile X minus one because we want to start in the top left hand corner. I'll just show you with the mouse on our tile here. We want to start off here, which will be zero, zero. And for our first tile, we want to finish here, which will be eight, eight. So we can do tile X minus one times tile size because that will be zero. And for y, we can just do tile y minus one times tile size. Okay, so this should take all of the tiles from our image and place them into our quads table for us. And this will happen when we create the tile sheet. So now let's add a function for drawing the tile sheet. Or actually, let's just run our code quickly and see if anything is broken. Nope. Okay, let's go ahead and add a function. Oops, sorry, um, add a new local function to our tile sheet to draw the tiles. So let's just call it draw tile equals function. And what do we need here? We need an x and a y position, and we also need to know the row and column of the tile. So let's call that tile x and tile y. So now we can do love.graphics.draw and importantly we need to make sure self is our first argument because this is going to be an instance method that we call on the instance of our tile sheet. So love.graphics.draw we need to pass in the tile or sorry the image I believe self.image and also we need to pass in the quad we want to use. And so we can get the quad by doing self uh, dot quads. And this is where we just use our 2D table. So we pass in tile X there and tile Y there. And we can look up the tile we want to draw. Now I can't actually remember the correct layout of the arguments for passing a quad into love.graphics.draw. So I'm going to show off the app I use for looking up documentation. So I'm using something called Zeal, and for Zeal you can download doc sets, which are just lists of instructions for different languages, and someone has very kindly made the Love2D one available. So now we can just search for love.graphics.draw, and here we can see we have the instructions for uh, how to draw things, and we just pass in an image, a quad, an X, and a Y, and we don't have to worry too much about everything else right now. So let's just go ahead and pass in X and Y as well. Okay, let's see if our draw tile method works. So in our main function, inside of draw, we can now, let's just make sure our 
tiles are going to be available to our draw function. So local tiles, then up here we just need tiles. Then down here inside of draw we can do tiles, draw tile, uh, and let's just draw it at 50, 50, and we'll try and draw our first tile. Okay, attempt to call method draw tile a nil value. So that's just because inside of our tile sheet, uh, we haven't, or I haven't, I say we, that <laughs> it's only me here writing the code. So we just need to make our draw tile method available on the instance of our method. So instance.drawTile equals draw tile. There we go. Cool, and now we can see we have a very tiny one tile um, in the corner here. So it's not scaled or anything, and that's because we aren't using our view to do any of our drawing yet. But we at least know we can grab the first tile by passing in one one. Let's just check the rest of our um, indexing works. So what if we draw one two? So if we look at our tiles, again we're expecting one two to be the first row, second column, so we just want the two tile. So let's see if that's going to work. Nope, we're actually drawing our five tile. Five, and that is because I have probably got X and Y the wrong way around in our tile sheet. So if we swap this for tile Y and make sure we use tile height here, and if I swap this for tile X and make sure we use the width here, or image width and image height, sorry. Um, there we go, and here we probably want to swap these as well. Does that make sense? Tile Y, tile Y, tile X. Okay, let's try that. Okay, now we're getting our second tile. Let's see if we can get, I don't know, maybe our eighth tile, which should be at one, two, three, four, two. Nope, we're getting a white square. Hmm. So if I just switch these back, tile X, tile Y, and make sure we use width and height. Okay, now we get our eighth tile. Interesting. And so if we go for one, ah, we do get our fourth tile. So it is far more likely that um, the problem was not with the code, but instead was in my head, which is quite often the case. Okay, very good. We can draw tiles. So let's make sure that our tiles are scaled up properly. And to do this, we need a view as well. So let's just remind ourselves how this works by looking in our sprite class. So we just need to pass in a view and then we use view in context to do all of our drawing. So do we have a view available in main.lua? We do, so let's just pass it in here in order to test that everything works. And in the next episode we will look at wiring things up into our room and also at how we lay our tiles out properly. So view and let's pull our view out so that we can store it in a variable. View equals view.create. Then we can just, ah, oh, we can't call it view because uh, view is the name of the module. So instead, let's just use, uh, let's call it the view. The 
the view. There we go. And now when we draw our tile, we want to make sure that we pass in a view as well. Now eventually this will be done probably via our game state object like everything else, but for now, just to test it, we can do this. Oops. And we can just call it view here because it is an argument in context and this takes a function let's just take a quick look at our sprite class yep we should just be able to do various drawing things inside of our function there run our game aha and there we see that our tile is now drawn the correct size uh, we happen to know or I happen to know that our player is twice the size of our tiles and that looks correct uh, it's a bit fuzzy so let's make sure we set the proper filter on the image when we create it so when we load in the image we can just do image. I believe it is set filter and we want nearest and nearest. Save that, run the game, and there we go. We have a nice crisp tile. So you can see that we're going to have to draw quite a lot of tiles in order to fill up a room, and we're going to think about how we do that in the next episode. Thank you very much, I hope this has been useful. Remember to like and subscribe and drop me any messages or comments if you'd like to make a suggestion or have any questions. Very happy to answer. And thank you for sticking with the series so far. Have a good one. Bye.